Hello and welcome to Weekly Worship from Alconbury Weald Church. My name is Reverend Rob Patterson and I'm going to be leading this time of worship. Today's theme is uh, we're looking at the story The Road to Emmaus and we're thinking about seeing Jesus. Uh, if you'd like to start off the service by listening to a song, then go down to uh, link one, song one, in the uh, more information below the video podcast picture. And there you'll find song one, Rend Collective, and the song Counting Every Blessing. So click, pause me, click that link, listen to the song, and then come back. And our opening sentence. Holy God, you are with us always. Help us to see you in the every day. And now we come to uh, light a candle. If you've got a candle, that'd be great. It just helps us to kind of really put this side, time aside to focus on God and God's presence in our every day. So I've lit the church candle as well uh, on behalf of all of us. Okay, and let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, we pray that you will help us to hear them, to read them, to mark them, to understand them, and to inwardly digest them, so that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may forever embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Now we come to challenge time. Uh, on Sunday I had uh, some pictures which I kind of slowly, they were covered up and I slowly revealed them and the challenge was to try and guess uh, where the picture was of or who the picture was of. Um, what I've done for, for weekly worship is I've taken uh, three of those pictures and I've just um, hidden them behind uh, the other pictures on the cover so they're kind of sticking out slightly a bit of a challenge for you see if you can work out what they are there's three uh, two places and one person or one character um, so have a look on the pictures uh, it's full of pictures the, the cover page of this video a podcast but uh, it's the ones that are kind of hidden behind the others are the ones you need to kind of maybe look at and see if you can identify so that's your challenge there Good luck. <laughs> OK, so the road to Emmaus. Here are three questions for us to think about. Why didn't the disciples see Jesus? Why did the disciples see Jesus? That was the second question. And how well do we listen? And that's our third question. First of all, uh, it's time to say sorry to God first. So let's just um, take a moment to think about how sometimes we forget to look for God in the world. Um, sometimes we forget to look for God because it's not Sunday. And uh, we seem to just think about God on Sundays. Uh, we don't consider God in our everyday lives or our everyday decision. Perhaps we don't expect to see God in normal places. And sometimes... Perhaps we don't actually want to see God at that particular moment. So just take a moment to think about those. And then scrunch your eyes shut. And then on three, say, sorry, God, with me. So one, two, three. Sorry, God. And now open your eyes as you receive God's forgiveness. And in a way, through that forgiveness, it's almost like putting on 3D glasses so we can begin to see God in the world, in our lives and in the everyday. And now our Bible reading uh, of the story of Road to Emmaus is taken from Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now, if you want to watch uh, 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 this story, um, which is quite close to the text, um, then do click, there's a link in the more information below. Uh, so do click that YouTube clip and watch the story. It's very good actually, so I would recommend it. But also you can read 
the, the text as well. I'm going to read the text to you now, but if you want to click and watch the story, then do that and then just forward me a little bit uh, to jump over me reading the story. But I'm going to read the story to you as well. So this is from Luke 24, 13 to 35. Behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was 60 stadia from Jerusalem. They talked with each other about all of these things which had happened. While they talked and questioned together, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk and are sad? One of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things which have happened there in these days? Jesus said to them, What things? They said to him, The things concerning Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who would redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things happened. Also, certain women of our company amazed us, having arrived early at the tomb, and when they didn't find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of us went to the tomb and found it just like the women had said, but they didn't see him. He said to them, Foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Didn't the Christ have to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Beginning from Moses and from all the prophets, he explained to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. They came near to the village where they were going, and he acted like he would go further. They urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is almost evening, and the day is almost over. He went in to stay with them. When he had sat down at the table with them, he took the bread and gave thanks. Breaking it, he gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognised him. Then he vanished out of their sight. They said to one another, Weren't our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us along the way and while he opened the scriptures to us? They rose up that very hour returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. They related the things that happened along the way and how he was recognised by them in the breaking of the bread. We now come to our time of reflection. Our first question, and I'd like to make a note of this on a piece of paper if you wish, and um, just uh, sort of think about any thoughts or, or answers that come to mind. So the first question is, why didn't the disciples see Jesus? Why didn't the disciples see Jesus? So why don't you just pause me and just make a few notes uh, under that question. Why didn't the disciples see Jesus in that story? OK, so pause me now and have a think. OK, so there might well have been some thoughts and ideas. I'm sure you've, you've thought of a few things. So why didn't the disciples see Jesus in this story? Well, some possible answers might be that the disciples were too caught up in their own lives and feeling sorry for themselves as they thought that they had lost a great friend. Um, perhaps his, different, his appearance was different. Maybe they had stopped believing and, and could not see him physically as before. Maybe they were consumed with grief. They would lost hope. They were just too sad to notice. 
Maybe Jesus didn't let them see him on purpose. Perhaps a preset view of how they would be saved. Maybe they were just so convinced that Jesus was dead and at that it was all over. Or simply, they just didn't expect to see him. I wonder how those compare with your answers. OK, got to keep you working. Here's our second question. We're going to do the same thing. So just make a note of the question and then pause me and have a, a think about any possible answers that you can come up with. So the question is, why did the disciples see Jesus in the story? So why did the disciples then see Jesus? So uh, pause me and have a think. Welcome back again. Um, Here's a few of our thoughts. Because um, they saw the holes in his hands when he broke the bread. Um, because they could see proof that it was him and believed again. Uh, a realisation from what he said. Suddenly they just knew him. Uh, there's more to life than grief. Um, because maybe they thought about Jesus and the stranger looked a bit a lot looked a lot like Jesus or said something that reminded them of Jesus or 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 simply um suddenly something very familiar occurred that only Jesus had done before again I wonder how your thoughts uh compared with ours now, I'm going to move on to pictures and uh, on the cover, apart from the pictures I've kind of slightly hidden behind, there's a, there's a lot of pictures um, and I'd just like you to think about the story and look at those pictures and then choose a picture which you think really connects with the story. Okay, so see if you can do that. So you pause me, look at the, so look at the pictures and then try and choose a picture that you think really connects with the Road to Emmaus story. OK, so pause me and make your choice. OK, well, I'm sure um, that can be a hard choice at times uh, and we chose quite a few different pictures uh, on Sunday Just Gone when we went through this. Now I want to sort of uh, flip it a bit um, so that I want you to keep that picture that you've chosen and then I want to think about the week that you've just had, reflect over that week and just to ask the question, does the picture you're now looking at connect with your story? So does the picture you're now looking at connect with your story? So pause me and have a think about that. Welcome back again. OK, so the final bit of um, the question or reflection uh, is this. A couple of statements and then a couple of questions. But the main question is what we're going to focus on at the bottom. So Jesus listened. The disciples listened. How well do you listen? And what can we do to improve our listening? Now, uh, this is when I was thinking about the story and I think about those earlier two questions. And when I then came to the third question, I'd kind of answered one of the other questions in the sense that um, I really noticed in the story how Jesus first listened to the disciples and then the disciples really listened to Jesus. And that made me think about uh, how actually our listening is connected with our seeing. So the Jesus listened, the disciples listened, how well do we listen and uh, what could we do to improve our listening? And that's the question I really want you to think about. What could we do to improve our listening? So maybe just uh, pause me and have a little think about that and make a couple of notes. OK, so hopefully you've, you've come up with one or two things for that. Here's, here's some of ours. Um, uh, ways to improve our listening, uh, no distractions or remove distractions, um, focus on others, give time to God, 
uh, like we say to our children, listen with our ears, but also our eyes and our body. Um, eye contact with others. Answer in ways that show you listen. Uh, give time to God. Uh, we can clear our mind from thoughts or distractions. Uh, pray. Uh, read the Bible. Uh, mindfulness. Silence. Uh, we have two ears and one mouth. So listen more than speaking. And uh, soul moments. Okay, so it's just a few ideas and thoughts about how we can improve our listening. And then by improving our listening, hopefully improve our seeing, seeing of God in the world around us. Now we come to our prayers. And um, I just invite you now to, um, I've uh, written a prayer in the more information. And uh, just to very simply, just write out that prayer uh, and decorate it and then stick it on the fridge for this week to really kind of well, help us think about um, seeing God in the everyday, in our everyday lives, on our front lines. So uh, copy that prayer out and uh, stick it on the fridge. Decorate it and stick it on the fridge or somewhere where you'll see it. Uh, to remind you to look for God in the everyday. While you're doing that, if you want, you could listen to a song, and that's the song two link, um, It Is Well, um, and uh, by Christine DeMarco. Uh, so that's uh, song two in the further information. Let's pray. Dear God, help me to listen, and through listening to you, the Bible and others, help me to see you in the everyday at school, at work, and when I'm spending time with my family and friends. Amen. And say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we come towards the end of our service. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son. He is the sacrifice for our sins, that we might live through him. And if God loves us so much, then we ought to love one another and if we love one another, then God lives in us. So uh, Charity of the Week this week is Sight Savers, uh, an international charity working to prevent avoidable blindness. There's more information about that in the further information below the video picture. Uh, and now we come to our time of feast. And uh, this is just where we break and share something. Uh, even if you're on your own, just uh, break something and uh, eat it, a, a snack of some kind. Um, the challenge for this week in, in Feast was to kind of create something like eyes or uh, glasses or something uh, out of some kind of snack um, or fruit or, or something. Okay, and then just share that. But I'll just say the blessing and you can uh, have the feast uh, at the end as perhaps you listen to the last song. So the blessing. May the Lord bless you and take care of you. May the Spirit fill you and guide you in living so that filled with the Spirit's power you may go in the light and peace of Christ, seeking God in the everyday. Amen. So like I said, if you wish uh, to uh, have your feast, uh, take have it now. And if you'd like, there's a good song uh, that really does connect with our theme called Captain by Hillsong. And uh, that's uh, song three in the further information below. So you might like to listen to that as you continue with your feast. All right. Thank you for listening and worshipping with me. And uh, I'll see or I'll speak to you next time. OK, take care and goodbye.